Yep, there's the room. And it's empty and waiting for us, as promised. Ah, <sighs> Navia is such a good person. Hmm, now that the serial disappearances case has been solved, no one's going to come after us for anything. Even without Silver standing guard, we can just completely relax. Why don't we stay and rest up here for a while? Even machines of Fontaine need to stop and recharge now and then. Oh, come on! This place isn't that bad. Besides, how often do we get to stay in an actual base? Oh, fine, fine. Remember that detective story Paimon read before? Well, the author is about to release a new book, so Paimon wanted to buy it as soon as it came out and have a quiet place to read it. Then it's agreed. Come on, let's get some sleep. We'll need to be up first thing in the morning to get in line and buy a copy. Paimon didn't expect that style at all. Even though it's a detective novel, it's also like a social documentary. Whew. It's actually pretty good. No! Paimon just spends a bit more time sleeping than you, that's all! Excuse me, but do you know if the Traveler and Paimon are lodging here? Huh? Who are you? Paimon doesn't recall seeing you before. Wait, you're not here to give us trouble, are you? A blonde Traveler and a chatty little fairy. Phew, <sighs> looks like I found the place. Good thing I asked the Spina di Rosula. Seems they sent me the right way. Hey, what do you mean by chatty? Paimon's always careful not to talk too much. Most of the time, anyway. It's an honor to meet you both. I was sent from the Palais Mermonia. Monsieur Nourilet wishes to see you. It seems he has something important to discuss in person. Nourilet? He wants to see us again already? Huh. We talked so much the last time we met. Has something happened since then? I am not privy to the details. It would be best if you came to the Palais Marmonia and asked Monsieur Norvillette in person. Mm, if you say so, but... Hyman has a bad feeling about this. <sighs> now that I've delivered the message, I'll take my leave. Thanks! We haven't left the room for a few days, so we'll head over once we've freshened up a bit. Huh? Isn't that Charlotte? Who's her friend and what are they chatting about? Be pleased with the cherry on top, Charlotte! Journalist extraordinaire! Please tell me you're joking! I read that a gang of criminals tricked the Gardamex by disguising themselves as blubber beasts. It's true, isn't it? It has to be! I've invested all my savings into graph adversarial technology and even taken out a sizable bank loan! I'm begging you! Begging you like the beggiest beggar in all of Begdom! I need you to calm down a little, Miss Lapine, Pauline. I admire your passion for your research, and I don't mean to dash your hopes for those, um, big-ticket orders. But I'm afraid I'm not joking. The Blubber Beast incident was a short story mailed to us by an anonymous amateur author, written in the style of a true story. Hmm. It sounds like they're just discussing a story, but why does this Miss Lapine Pauline seem so distressed? Funnily enough, I actually remember being in a meeting where the editing team was debating the potential risk of misleading the public with this story. They even went to Maison Guardianage for advice. But to our surprise, they fully supported us printing it. They figured that the false intel would be a great way to dupe potential criminals into wearing ridiculous costumes when breaking the law. In truth, Gardamex are extremely sophisticated in their capabilities. They can identify criminals just as reliably as the best human guards, so a crude disguise isn't going to get you far. If anything, it'll just make you stand out all the more. 
Since we ran that story, the Maison Guardianage has made a slew of arrests, including, uh, one phantom blubber beast, a titanic red-crowned finch, and a specter man. So I knew this story had helped out law enforcement, but this is the first time I'm learning of an innocent citizen being deceived by it and investing so much Mora for nothing. <laughs> Uh-oh. She really sounds like she's in pain. Um, Pina thinks we should just ask Charlotte what's going on. Hey, Charlotte! Traveler! Paimon! It's you! I was in the area taking some photos for a story when I got to talking to Miss Lapine Pauline about her research. She read an article in the Steambird about a criminal who evaded Gardamek detection by disguising themselves as a blubber beast. Inspired by this story, she spent a lot of Mora researching counter-criminal image recognition technology. Her aim was to improve Fontaine's public security by developing a device that could enhance Gardamek's target recognition capabilities. She was hoping I could write an article to spread awareness about image recognition technology. She even paid me for the article and gave me one of her prototype devices before I could get a word in. But unfortunately, it was just a fictional story, and her efforts and aspirations were all in vain. I tried to let her down gently, but she's finding it all very hard to accept. This is a new situation for us, too. It's such a pity. It seems like the author was only trying to make the story interesting. And the Maison Guardianage only had Fontaine's best interest in mind. Wait, Miss Lapine Pauline? What are you doing? I'm gonna pick a fight with a Gardamek, head to the opera at Biclès, and get a one-way ticket to the Fortress of Meropede. That way, I won't have to repay my debts. It's the only way I can afford to keep on living. Whoa, there's no need to go that far. I mean, come on, look at you. You wouldn't even dent the Gardamex armor. In all likelihood, they'd only hold you up at the Maison Guardianage for a few days before letting you out, and then you'd still have to repay your debts. Actually, instead of going into the technicalities of that, how much did you actually invest? How bad can it really be? <laughs> 270,000 Mora. Okay. Well, escaping to the Fortress of Meripede over a sum like that seems like a last resort. Surely there must be other options. Not anymore. I used to be an equipment supplier to the Fontaine Research Institute before that blew to pieces, and now I'm just a small-time engineer. I scraped together some savings over the past few years, but I put every last mora into this project, and now I'm left with nothing. It's not just my savings that are gone. It's my whole future as a graph adversarial technology specialist and my dreams of becoming a billionaire one day. <laughs> my life is over. Don't despair, Miss Lapine Pauline. I think I know a way for you to turn this around. This prototype you've given me, the camera lens for image recognition sample collection. It's really quite something. You said you designed it specifically for high fidelity image capture and analysis, yes? The rapid focal length adjustment is a very useful function in its own right. It's sure to make many journalists' jobs much easier. In fact, I'd say it has the potential to revolutionize Fontaine's news media. So your research efforts thus far are by no means in vain. The technology you've developed may have many applications that you've never even considered. Really? Absolutely. I've been working as a journalist for the Steambird for a long time now. No one understands the issues we journalists face on a day-to-day -day basis better than me. So keep calm, take heart, and start thinking about mass production. In the meantime, I'll show your invention to all my colleagues to drum up interest in your product. I can't believe it! If this is true, then I can look into setting up a whole camera lens development pipeline! My big ticket orders and billionaire aspirations are still in the cards! Oh, 
Maybe I should consider taking out another loan. That way, I can rapidly improve the lens production process, be the first to market, and prepare to battle for dominance in the camera industry! Come on! Stop daydreaming about your pipelines for a minute! Just take it one step at a time and see how it goes! There's no sense in putting all your eggs in one basket before things are even off the ground! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I can probably speak to some people I know and license my image recognition device to a workshop to raise some funds! I can't believe I didn't think of this sooner! There's no time to lose! I need to get to work! Early bird gets the worm! Uh, can you believe her? She just ran off! Paimon's pretty sure our vice went in one ear and out the other. It's understandable. When inspiration and passion strike at the same time, it's all too easy to throw yourself headfirst into your work and forget about everyone around you. A lot of journalists are the same way when they're first starting out. But don't you worry. I'm gonna write an article on all this and I'll be checking in on her regularly. Her research has the potential to benefit the entire journalistic community. I'll give her plenty of input to stop her from going down any rabbit holes and make sure mass production of her lens can begin as soon as possible. It's reassuring to know that you'll be looking out for her, Charlotte. Actually, you know what? Why don't you two take this prototype lens? I'm sure you'll have plenty of chances to use it on your travels. It takes the right person to get the most out of a new technology. In your hands, it's sure to capture some amazing sights. Thanks a lot, Charlotte. What a nice surprise. We were just curious about what you guys were talking about. Totally didn't expect to get a free gift out of it. You're welcome. I got something out of this too. The beginnings of a very interesting news story. The boundaries between real news reports and news like fiction must not be blurred, even when there's a compelling justification for doing so. Yes, that's how I'll phrase it to the editors when I give them my feedback. Let's hope we don't mislead any more well-meaning citizens in the future.